Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on post-date pregnancy. Post-date pregnancy is defined as a pregnancy that has exceeded the expected date of delivery, which is 40 weeks of period of gestation. The causes could be due to hormonal influence, where there is a defect in the pituitary adrenal axis, causing a decrease in estrogen and cortisol levels. And this estrogen and cortisol is important in the initiation of labor. So when there is decrease in their levels, there will be post-date pregnancy, where there is delayed labor. It can also be due to sulfatase deficiency in the placenta, which prevents the conversion of androgen to estrogen. So again, there is low estrogen levels. So what are the complications and risks towards the baby in post-date pregnancy? They might be oligohydramnios, causing cord compression during labor, meconium aspiration, because meconium is thicker due to reduce in the amount of amniotic fluid, it can cause blockage to the fetal respiratory pathway. Macrosomia, which means big size baby, causing obstructed labor and also birth trauma, such as brachial nerve injury, shoulder dystocia and hypoxia of the baby. Other complications like placental insufficiency due to placental aging more than 40 weeks, causing impaired in oxygen transfer from the mother to fetus, causing fetal distress and then later caused intrauterine death. It can also impair the transfer of the nutrients, causing intrauterine growth restriction of the baby. Fetal dysmaturity syndrome, where there is a triad of long, thin, malnourished infant with flecking skin and meconium stained skin, which occurs in around 20% of the cases of postum gestations. Risk of stillbirth, and there may also be fetal compromise during labor. So for management, the principal concepts in management are as following, where only normal pregnancies can be allowed to go past the estimated date of delivery. Terminating the pregnancy will correct the problem, and we must monitor the uterus environment. Delivery problems of shoulder dystocia with macrosomic infants, meconium aspiration and hypoxia must be avoided. For antenatal management, doctor will do vaginal examination every weekly between the 40 to 42 weeks of gestation to assess the cervix condition and also using the Bishop scale to predict whether induction of labor will be successful. Fetal ass assessment where there is monitoring of fetal growth by doing weekly ultrasound scan and also umbilical artery doppler to assess the placenta function and umbilical artery flow velocity. Monitor the fetal well-being by using the fetal kit chart and also checking their biophysical profile. We can allow spontaneous vaginal delivery up to post-date one week. If there is still no sign of labor, we have to do induction of labor. Offer stretch and sweep at 41 weeks and we can offer induction of labor between 41 and 42 weeks. So if induction of labor fails or there is complications that develop that require the baby to be delivered immediately, we have to do emergency lower segment caesarean section. That's all for this video. Thank you.